Hi everyone, it's Lauren and this is my October reading wrap up part one. I'm going to divide my wrap up this month into two parts and this video is going to be about the Man Booker shortlisted books that I was finishing in the first half of October because the winner was announced on the 13th of October so I spent the first couple of weeks of the month really getting through the rest of the shortlist so that I could read them all before the winner was announced and then the second half of the month was kind of all about the short books I'm gonna say. After reading all the man booker stuff I was just like short books, quick books, oh I'll get them in my brain. <laughs> um, so the second half of my October wrap up is going to feature all of those books and that will be up probably in a couple of days time but I really wanted to take the time to talk about the man booker books a little bit um, and I didn't want to squeeze it all into one video. So today I'm going to tell you what I thought of The Year of the Runaways by Sanji Sahota, The Fisherman by Chikosi Obiel and the winner of the Man Booker Prize, A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon Jane. So this is the first one, The Year of the Runaways by Sanjeev Sahota. This is about um, three young men from India who um, illegally immigrate into the UK and a young woman who is British Indian who is um, one, of the, one of the men's visa wife and about how all their lives sort of converge um, in Leeds where they're, where they're all living. What I really liked about this book was the uh, four main characters' backstories throughout the story. You start in um, in Leeds where three of the men are living in this horrible, cramped, overcrowded, dirty house um, and being carted around to jobs which cash in hand stuff where people don't mind about their visas and that kind of thing. And you go back to their time in India and see um, what different social classes and different castes that they're all from and each of them have their own reasons for being in the UK and for needing to get out of India either to escape persecution or because of money problems and you also see a Narinda her backstory and her reasons for wanting to be a visa wife and helping uh, one of these guys get into get into the UK so I did enjoy that because I think that's a very interesting topic that the desperation that a lot of young people seem to have in India and other countries and having to get into the West and the incredible extreme measures that they will go to in order to get themselves out um, and and go through all these awful awful jobs just just in order to get some cash back to their families so it was an interesting perspective on the, on the whole illegal immigration thing that, that I haven't read about before where I felt this book felt short though was the actual characters themselves. I didn't really feel any emotional connection to them, I don't think, and also I found their relationships with each other quite unbelievable. For some reason, I don't really know why I didn't connect with it, but when they were either friends or they hated each other or they were falling in love or all this kind of stuff going on, I just didn't, I just didn't believe it at all. So I, I'm, a, I'm quite disappointed with it, which, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to reading this one. I think almost the problem is that because you start with them in Leeds and then you go back to hearing each of their backstories, once you've heard all four of the characters' backstories, it's almost like the, the plot's run out and it doesn't really tie up properly. Um, so it, it felt a little bit flat at the end because I, I, was, I was interested in each of their own stories but perhaps I would have preferred almost reading a non-fiction book about actual people who have gone through this, this immigration process. But I, in terms of actual fiction, I just felt like it didn't really go anywhere and I wasn't, I wasn't that immersed in it uh, you know, as a story so I'm quite disappointed but I, I don't know if that's just because I'm looking at this as a man book a shortlisted book which is the, the obviously the theme of the three that I'm going to talk about in this video so I don't know if maybe I'm comparing it to other books too much or trying to work out why it was shortlisted because I don't really know why it was shortlisted I think this is the problem with reading books once they've been shortlisted for prizes though because if I'm being honest I think out of all six Man Booker longlisted books the one that I enjoyed completely the most was probably A Spool of Blue Thread by Anne Tyler but I read that month I read that months ago before it was even longlisted and I'm actually I was surprised it was longlisted like, like, let alone shortlisted but now I'm reading books knowing that they've been shortlisted and that's the reason that I'm reading them perhaps I'm asking perhaps I'm asking too much of them so the second one I have to show you today is The Fisherman by Chikosi Obioma. This is, a, a, along with Anne Tyler, this is probably one, one of the books that I enjoyed the most. This is a debut novel and 
for a debut, it is absolutely incredible. It, it's, it's an amazing debut. He's done very, very well to get to the Merva Gashawlis straight away. It's about a group of brothers in Nigeria who, when they're out fishing one day, there's a madman who tells them a prophecy, and on hearing this prophecy, that kind of destroys them and, and picks a part of their family, and it creates waves through through the generations, from the older boys down to the younger ones, and also through throughout the years of their of their family. So it uses a lot of familiar tropes in the way that it's written. There's lots of elements of fables, myths, fairy tales, of superstition, and uh, that that kind of thing. So it's it's very very interesting the way that it's written. Um, and it's parts of it are very, very beautiful and I am quite lyrical the way that it's written as well. So I did really enjoy the language in this book. Um, I think the only reason that it didn't win is that it does it does still feel like a first novel. And I don't really know how else to explain it, because there's nothing in it that I can specifically pick out and say, oh this wasn't done quite well, or this wasn't done quite well. It's just it just wasn't quite there. For some reason, um, and I and it probably I, I think I'm just guessing it just it's just because it is his debut, and I think that's probably why. So I'm really looking forward to what else he's going to write, and um, maybe it's good. Maybe it's good that he didn't win because if your first book wins the Man Booker Prize, then then you've got nowhere to go. Finally, the last book for this video is the winner: A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. When we went to the ceremony for the announcement of the winner, uh, I, I was only halfway through this book at that point, but even then. I was just like this this has to win that I halfway through having read the other five I just I just was I would have been so surprised if this hadn't won this book is told from many different perspectives and they've got a range of characters it takes place in Jamaica and New York and um, from the 70s all up to up to the 90s and the thing that's pinning all of these different character stories together is the attempted assassination of Bob Marley in 1976 and the, the people that were involved, the mob gangs, the politicians, um, the civilians, whose lives touched upon that moment somehow. What is very, very impressive about this book is that there are so many characters, each of them speaks in their own voice, um, each of them have very different perspectives, but each one is incredibly believable and fle fle fleshed out. And as you're reading it, despite the fact that some of the themes are very, very complicated, some are very violent, and considering I don't know a lot about the history of um, these locations at that at that time. It's not as difficult to follow as you might think. So Marlon James has done very, very well to, to bring this all together and, um, and make a coherent story um, from all of these. It's almost an, a collection of short stories which happen to overlap in certain instances rather than one continuous narrative. The first half of the book, although I was really appreciating it and thinking, wow, this is a really um, interesting story, it's a really well-crafted novel, I did find it a little bit of a struggle because some people talk in dialect which is quite difficult to follow, um, other chapters are very, very um, modern so they might just not have any punctuation and then there, and there are so many characters as well, and the political situation is so complicated. So the first half of the book, I was thinking, oh, I really want to enjoy this, but it's it's just it's just hard. It's just hard going. But once I got over the first half, I started to really really enjoy it. And the more I read it, the more I enjoyed it. And I really wanted to know about these characters and it may have helped that some of the characters died <laughs> so I didn't have to worry about reading from their perspective anymore but I started to I started to get it and I started to connect the dots and by the end of it when I put it down I was just like yeah that was a really good book you know when you have that kind of feeling once you've finished something you can appreciate it in a different way than when you're when you're mid flow and I thought it was very clever because it is so complicated because you're jumping between different characters it never really felt like too much even if there was a, a chapter that was very difficult to read it wasn't they're not normally that long so it wasn't too hard that you didn't feel like oh it's okay I'll just keep reading this chapter and then a different voice will come along in a minute and it will be fine so it really helped you slowly build up a picture of the entire political social situation and by the end of it I really felt like I'd, I'd got something from that. So this isn't something that I probably would have wanted to pick up if it hadn't been shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. It also, you know, is, is something that isn't necessarily enjoyable straight away. It's a book to be attacked, but I th I do think it was worth it. Like it's worth getting through those first few chapters. It's worth having a go at it because it, in the end, it it's just very very impressive 
and I'm so pleased it won. I'm really pleased it won. It's been really interesting actually, the fact that I'd read all six of them before the winner was announced because normally when there's things like this with the Man Booker Prize I'm normally really supporting just an author that I happen to like whether I've read the book that's been nominated or not and I think the reason that this won and the reason that I really wanted it to win is that there's a very um, diverse range of books and they're all very very different and some of them are quite divisive so for example I know uh, Jen and I really enjoyed Saturn Island by Tom McCarthy, Jean really hated Saturn Island and uh, similarly lots and lots of people really really loved and were really affected by A Little Life. I know Jen really didn't like that like at the end of it she was very angry <laughs> so if you're trying to imagine that there's a group of six judges having to agree on a book a book that's very divisive that one person might love and one person might hate just isn't going to win because you have to get to a unanimous agreement and I think this is the only one on the shortlist which I just feel everybody c could read it and just appreciate what it is there's nothing in this book that I feel like could have been done differently um, and I have no niggling doubts about it. But it's so hard because art is so subjective and it makes you emotional and passionate about certain things and it's it's hard to, to judge different art against each other. It's not the same as like a maths exam. So it's interesting to see which type of books win because that maybe they're just ones that everyone can agree on rather than ones that people really love. I don't know. Comments below. What do you think? So that's the first half of my October wrap up and the end of all the man booker stuff. Um, I hope you thought it was interesting. Um, let me know if you were pleased that Marlon James won. Um, if not, we can't be friends. <laughs> and I will be back in my next video in a couple of days time uh, with my non-man booker reads. So I will see you then. And in the meantime, let's chat in the comments. Bye. Like Elena Ferranti's writing, she's an Italian author. Her books in the UK are published by Europa Editions. And this is the first of her Neapolitan novels, which is a series. The third one in the series came out this year, and I actually think the fourth one's coming out next year. So I've, I've really got to get.